name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Blessed feast of the great Saint uh, Pope Corlus VI. I uh, wanted to do just a quick um, video out to talk a little bit about him and also a little bit about the saints. I think in, in this contemporary period that we're living in, we've come to be extremist about a lot of things. Uh, growing up, we celebrated the saints a lot. We, we would receive as baraka from priests and clergy and monks um, and Sunday school classes, those small pictures of the saints. And I remember actually being excited about those things, wanting to stick them up on the back of the, um, whatever it's called, behind your, your bed. And on night tables, on, on binders, when we actually use binders, um, the saints were alive. It was a big thing when we started getting computers that we'd have saints as our desktops, um, having saints as the backsplash of our telephones. And now I think we're one of two extremes where either we're completely diehard or completely void of having the effective saints, not the effective saints, the relationship um, with saints in our lives. And I think this might run a little bit anti of our faith when we take it to that extreme. As a basic premise, as we all know, because of our living God, no one, no one who dies is dead in that they're not just dust that have that have vaporized because christ is risen so are the so are the saints alive right the reason why saint mary could appear in zaytun is only because christ is risen so the idea that saints are not just gone um is not is not a new into orthodoxy i'm not going to have a whole talk on intercession what we're just trying to say is that Saints put in the proper place, there are family members. They are members of the community that have passed from this side of life before us. When we call someone a saint, when we canonize somebody a saint, what we're saying is that person can, in a way, be used as an, an official poster boy or poster girl, for lack of a better word, I'm not being reverent, um, for the church. In the same way, for example, that um, not the same way, but in a in a comparable way. So sometimes a company would have in the past Michael Jordan on a poster or Kobe or different uh, celebrities was to say that these are people that we endorse and that endorse what we believe. And if they don't live up to the standard of that place, they're taken down. So again, terrible analogy, but not so terrible analogy. What I'm trying to say is we're putting up people who did it really well that we're saying this is somebody that you could look at and emulate they they were right in their way of struggle they were right in their way of faith and that's why there's always those two prongs on it of 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 faith and and virtue so in that sense in the same way that i could get very close to people who are alive that doesn't replace my relationship with christ it enhances it and grows it uh, the same it is so also with the saints. And so having a relationship with them is something that's very alive because they are alive. And their participation in our lives is because of the grace of God. What God gives, he gives to all. Whatever we give, we give from the things that are his, not from the things that are ours. And that includes the works of the saints as well in our lives. I'm saying this because I think if you don't have a saint in your life, if you don't have an intercessor, you might really be missing out. You can go to heaven without having an intercessor. Um, you're just missing out. Um, it's important to develop your relationship with the whole community of God, and that can also include the saints who have gone on before us. Anyway, I won't. I won't spend a long time. I've sent out to you all um, in the general WhatsApp group um, links to some of the talks that were done uh, last year um, on Saint Pope Krulus that um, I would really encourage you to listen to uh, just to know his life and to know what he struggled through and what his virtues were. But St. Pope Carlos is a saint of our time. And I think for the reason that he resonates so much with us, the saint of our time who struggled with so much that I think many of us could relate to. He wasn't always understood by his family, but he had a good family life. Um, he wasn't always understood 
uh, by his community, by his siblings, like with letters, as you, if you go through the, the recordings, he was not just not understood well, he was not just misunderstood, he was often treated miserably. And I think so many of us um, think that nobody gets us, we feel victimized, we feel misunderstood, we feel that church can become a place of great difficulty instead of great joy, um, that we're persecuted by the system, that nobody gets us. I think if you read into the life of Pope Krulus, um, you'll see somebody who could make all of those claims. I think what might be different, not what might be, what is different from for him than us, is how he dealt with it. He took what would have been for mo all of us, to be quite honest, very dark. And in his cooperation with God, transformed it into light. This is a man who was never seen as the guy who would be something, it doesn't seem like. He is somebody who, as a kid, mostly kept to himself. I doubt anybody thought, oh, that's future Pope right there. Because he was so focused on what he was doing and doing what he was doing well. When he when his when he discovered asceticism, when he discovered the pursuit of righteous pursuit of holiness, he went all the way. He didn't let the normal things of life become excuses for him to slack. But he still participated in the normal things of life. And I think that's one of the reasons why he's so beautiful, is that in his pursuit of holiness, it's not like he was oblivious to reality. He made holiness and reality become the same place, the same space. Um, when he wanted to be a monk, that was completely anti the normal culture of his time. The educated, they weren't the ones to go to the monastery. Um, the middle class or rich were not the ones at the time to go to the monastery. But that was part of his pursuit, and that is why he did it. And he followed the norms within the monastery, whether that was the listening to the elders when they wanted him to do or not do something, um, what jobs he took on, what places he resided in, all of that he took. But at the same time, he had a sense of others, which is why his famous exit from the monastery of Dir um was a result of his compassion, a result of his, his need to obey the gospel. In his eyes, there was no other right way to obey the gospel than to stand up for these victimized monks. If you don't know the story, um, please read uh, the book by Father Daniel Fanus or listen to the talks as, as summaries. Um, but it's it's mind blowing, and not only mind blowing that he left for their sake, but that he didn't stop. He was serving them in the city, a place where he didn't want to be. He wanted to be in a cave, and he went individually, so solely, to be their advocate before the Pope, and the Pope, who had previously loved him, at first was taken aback by him. I, I know I'm I'm throwing out glimpses, but I'm saying this is a very real person, right? When God decided to work miracles through him. It wasn't like everybody today. We were excited about the miracles of Krulos. There's however many books on that. On that, but at his time, many people were calling him a sorcerer, a fraud, a liar, a thief, a swindler, demonic. Right? There was no way anybody would thought a person who has that much horrible said about him that he could ever become pope. But it's another sign that. You work and God works, and when we work together, the little we do becomes infinitely blessed by God. St. Pope Cross, against all expectations of him, was something. St. Pope Cross, who was a man who accepted to sleep on Rosif, on, on pavement, that accepted as a monk to be homeless, became the shepherd of an entire generation. And I don't just mean that when he was Pope, I mean his disciples. I mean, the very big names that, that you've all heard of, Pope Shunuda, Amber Gregorius, Amber Samuel, Abu um, there's many. But I also mean the countless others who were sitting at his feet being discipled, that he walked with, that he taught, that he grew, that he instilled in them and grew in them the spirit of the love of God. He was a father to fathers before he became the Pope. And it was the Pope was this natural result, it seems, of the entire fullness 
of his life, of his struggles, of his self-denial, of his union with God through his deep, 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 deep life of prayer. That is the most famous part of his life is his prayer. But all of that is to say, when you look at him, you can see that theory is reality. We divorce the two. We say things like, okay, yeah, yeah, I know I should pray, but what can I do practically, quote unquote? In Pope Carlos, you might be able to get a glimpse of what that looks like. Many times we think that if I'm going to really follow the gospel, it means that I'm going to have to compromise on some spots, otherwise the world will kill me. We see in Pope Carlos that that A doesn't matter, and B, it's not necessarily what even happens at all. The man who is non-politician was loved by the, the president. But focus in on his life, zoom in, see what lessons you can take from him. Um, for those of you who can, um, I was really encouraging you all, if you could, I know it's very short uh, notice and not well planned. We can try and plan it. I was encouraging any that can get to Champagne today to pray in his church to do so um, in, in uh, St. Mina and St. Pocoro's church in Champagne. And I think maybe as a region, we need to think about planning and coordinating how can we get to one another's churches for the feast of the saints that are there by celebrating the saint, by remembering their name as we sing in the chants. Um, we say the chants remembering of your, of your name. We, we make, we point out that we're doing that. They're alive, they're present among us, they work in us, they work through us, heaven and earth rejoice together. By bringing heaven and earth into the same space because they are in communion, we feel their joy, we feel their aid, we feel their help, and we are encouraged on our journey, and we're able to affect others and bring the joy of our risen Lord to others. Um, I pray that his feast be a blessed one for all of you, and I can't wait to see you all. Pray for me.